John Lotito. John, tell me about Chubby Chubb's inequality. What does Chubby Chubb's inequality enable us to do? do with Chubby Chubb's inequality? Besides solve homework problems. We can't figure out why we have to do it. random variable of unknown distribution. It can be anything. Chubby checks inequality allows you to make a probability Sample size we approximate the population That sounds like a sample limit here to me. I guess it's my You're pretty close though. You're getting there. Sridhar. Sridhar is some kind of Oh, you were just telling me you didn't have this uh, here. Laura Hughes. Said the limit here. Um, basically, as the number of samples. Not the number of samples. Yes, five. So close, but you got a little jumble there. Um, this was, when you take a, when you take a class as undergraduates, your professors, I hope, tell you that there's one big idea you got to take away from this class. 
and I hope that when you put statistics, they said that the one big idea that you remember 20 years from now is the central limit theorem. It's just like when I teach principles of microeconomics. I tell them that the one big idea you got to remember for 20 years from now, when you see me out on the street corner selling pencils from a tin cup, you got to come to me and uh, say, Dr. Buck, I hope that you're selling pencils only to the point where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. That's the one big idea that you taught us 20 years ago. So in statistics, the one big idea was supposed to be essential limit theorem. Because all of statistical inference <coughs> hinges on Central limit is understanding that central limit here. Um, uh, you don't get off my hook that fast. Okay. Uh, like the distribution of the random variable is going to be normally distributed as large And what then? The sample. So as the sample size gets large, <coughs> the distribution of the sample mean approaches the norm. Okay. And that's why in what we were doing before, I had uh, x bar minus mu under the null divided by s over the square root of n. And I said, even if you don't know the distribution of the underlying random variable, if your sample is big enough, you can use students t. And you all know that if you look at the bottom row of whatever student's t table you have, that the critical values in that t table are very close to the critical values in the normal tables. You can see if there's a more filter is really in the last four minutes. I asked that what I said was that it's useful for proving this. You can go from Trebuchet's inequality to a weak law of large numbers. Trebuchet's inequality tells you that uh, you can figure out a probability knowing the variance and the mean. And then the weak law of large numbers tells you the probability that you're going to differ from the mean by more than some arbitrarily small, if you, if you pick an arbitrarily small number, I know how big to pick my sample to get my sample statistic within that distance of the mean with some probability. And the central limit theorems, and so I use that to prove consistency, to convergence of probability. And then the central limit theorem is a law of large numbers. It's a strong law of large because it tells me something about the distribution of my sample. So the weak law of large numbers doesn't tell me anything about the distribution of my random variable, but it does tell me something about convergence of the random variable. So what it tells me is that the sample statistic is not only getting closer to the mean, but the variance is shrinking down. So I use a feature of Chebyshev's inequality to prove uh, the weak law of large numbers. And then I use the weak law of large numbers to prove uh, convergence in the distribution. And there are many uh, versions of the central limit here apply covering all the higher order moments as well. Many of the higher order moments. So that was, that was a pretty good ploy there. No, I don't really want to do something.